We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello everyone and welcome to Fridge Cam and another one of our pretentious ingredients episode. Today, two normals, Jamie, who likes big flavours, and Mike, the palate of a 10 year old. They're going to be judging our potentially pretentious ingredients. I've got four of them. Let's see how this goes. What 10 year old likes lobster? A pretentious one. Do you want to lift the cloche on number one? I do, Ebers. Oh. <laughs> um, you look confused. But yes. I mean, it looks fruity. They look intimidating. Intimidated by something so small. Ebers, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Um, do I eat? Do I... By all means, have a taste. Whoa. <sighs> oh. I feel like I've bitten through orange peel. I mean, they're nice, they're very sweet. It's almost like a peel holding just a big ball of marmalade together. I'm not gonna lie, when I first bit into it, it gave me toothache. That's how sweet it is. Look at that. It's all oozy and I'm gonna have to suck it, Ebers. I really need to see that. These are glacé clementines in a wooden box. Handmade in France, luscious clementines come from Corsica and take two weeks to candy. They're first cooked and then steeped in sugar solutions of increasing strength for many weeks until they are sumptuously sweet. There we go. This is what I was expecting. I think they're meant to be kind of after dinner treats. Wow, there's loads. 13. I don't mind them, I think they're okay. But the telling thing is that I have not gone back for that. They're big old portions. They're big old portions and they're really, really sweet. It is sickly sweet. It is so... No, 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 no. Sumptuously sweet. Can you see yourself whipping these out at the end of a meal? Where are these useful? I don't know. I don't see a use for them, to be perfectly honest, in my life. I think they're quite polarising. A small quantity of that throughout a fruitcake or on top of something would work really nicely, but I've had enough of that and I've had two bites. That's been made for gifting, hasn't it? That's like, uh, rather than chocolates, uh, Cassandra, we thought we'd bring you something a little bit more special. And you'd hand that over instead of chocolates and Cassandra would go, oh darling, we haven't had these since 1973 when we were in the Pyrenees. What about price wise? Oh, I'm gonna go punchy because this is the format that we're talking about and say that these are two pounds each. So I'm gonna say 26 pounds for the box. Let's go with 30 pounds. Sold to you for 30 pounds. Is that what Bang it is? Bang on. Really? To make some two pounds 30 a Clementine. I think if I got these out at a party, everyone else would feel like I misread the room. Pretentious or not, Jamie? That is completely out there and therefore pretentious. I don't think they're pretentious because I don't think they're impressive. I actually look at those and go, oh, bless them, look at the little cases. I don't think, wow, you are spoiling us, Ambassador. We have come dressed for the candy shop, so I've got another sweet treat under the cloche. Number two. Candy shop. They're gold. I'm already thinking pretentious. They're pebble sized. They're pebble sounding. They're solid, like you can't break them. Cinnamony. My initial impression is that the, it's like a coated almond. Did you have strong coffee this morning? Because you are on form. That is an almond inside of there. Is it? Mm. It feels like it's gonna crack a tooth whilst I try and get into it though. <laughs> Whoa. Oh man, I was not expecting that. I thought I chipped a tooth. <laughs> it's a nut. They're quite, oh, they're quite nice once you get your head round them. You know when sometimes you go around to someone's house and they've got like a bonsai tree with pebbles. They look like the pebbles that surround like the bonsai tree or like a, at the bottom of a fish tank. The description, as this is Harvey Nichols, there will be no boring confectionery here. Big and shiny, that's how we like our indulgent snacks. Hence why we created these enormous gold almond drage, delicious crunchy almonds in crispy coats that are sure to add a little golden glamour to proceedings. Do you know what? They do exactly that. They're completely unnecessary, but I don't think many people aren't gonna enjoy these. 
I, they could have just written the word pretentious, couldn't they? Yeah. So a dragé, uh, sometimes known as confetto or Jordan almonds, is a bite-sized form of confectionery with a hard outer shell, often around nuts. Typically, for decorative, symbolic, or even medicinal purposes, they used to use them as sugar coat, some nasty tasting medicines. A spoonful of sugar. It does help the medicine go down. It's like they were cut from the same cloth. You've read the line where it says, pimp your nuts. Yeah. Did Jamie do the marketing for these guys? <laughs> I think these are best used as decoration that you don't realise is edible. Interesting you say that, because according to the Huffington Post, it is technically illegal to sell silver dragé in most states across the US. In fact, all brands selling them must label the sprinkles as for decoration only. In France, they've been banned from next year onwards. Now read the ingredients on the back of that one. Number one, sugar almonds, starch, maltodextrin, colour, titanium dioxide. Fun fact about titanium dioxide? Go on. They coated Saturn V rocket with it when they sent it into space. Excellent. Well, it must be robust. Outside colours, silver and quinoline yellow. So it has got the silver in it that they are potentially banned elsewhere. I don't like this warning that's on the back of the packet. May have adverse effects on activity and attention in children. What? Hey, it's nice of them to give you a heads up. You can buy a bag of sugar-coated almonds for £2.99. That's a 300 gram bag. How much do you reckon they are? I don't think there's even near 300 grams in there. It's 175. Remember. Oh, they could be anything. They, they could be endless. I'm going to say £10. £8? £12.95? That's a lot, but I kind of expected them to be that high, and I'm, I'm no way saying that they are worth that. I think I agree. If you're looking for decorative sweet treats or something to decorate a cake, there's much cheaper, arguably better ways of doing it, probably without adverse effects. Well, we'll see what those adverse effects are. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and so you can watch my demise over the course of the next six months. Pretentious or not? The idea and the concept are not pretentious. What they've done to it and what they've used within it is terrible. Pretentious. Absolutely pretentious. I'm just glad you haven't got Baz here to test them. May have adverse effects on activity and attention in children. He does not need any more adverse effects. Hello, Mike here again. Sorry, we've just paused the video to ask you to subscribe and hit the bell. You won't regret it, promise, and it really does make a difference, so thank you. Back to the video. Number three. Flatbread. Yeah. Genius. Well, they don't look pretentious. Instantly, that means they're going to be really expensive. <laughs> Flatbreads. Won't be able to call me a normal for much longer. Look at that. That is indeed very flat bread. Have a taste. Cinnamon grams. So have you got cinnamon up your nose cinnamon today? Because I don't think there was cinnamon in the dragé either, but... Um, cheese. Cheese. They're tasty. It's parmesan -y. My goodness, you're on Whoa! fire today. These... Traditionally known as mother-in-law tongues are crisp, light flatbreads handmade in the heart of Piemonte, northwest Italy. A famous food and wine region, perfect eaten as a snack with antipasti or a cheese board. Trying is believing, which is why I have another board for you. Oh, okay. Oh, Ebba's Deli is open. Fantastic. This looks fabulous. I would certainly expect to see something along this line with my antipasti. Okay, not eating that. Mm, might eat a bit of that. So Jamie, these are made by Sigiano, a company that loves true Italian food. They say, sourcing the best products from all over Italy with quality, integrity and provenance at its core. This is the brand to fall in love with for the new season. Mm, Italians are so good at food. This is amazing. Um, what do I think of them? Okay, they're really crunchy, they're really tasty. They're not massively cheesy, which is a good thing, because it means like that subtle parmesaniness complements whatever you eat it with. We need to talk about this mother-in-law's tongue a bit, because I have a mother-in-law who happens to be half Italian. <laughs> and How long's her tongue? Right, well, this is what this is the thing. I'm not gonna say anything along this line of conversation because. I'm scared of her. I think it is just the shape, and not in flatbread form, but I have a mother-in-law's tongue at home in my flat already. It's a plant, it's an indoor house plant. 
Mother-in-laws get a bad rep, and I've got a really nice one. They feel rustic. There's no sog to that, they are crunchy, and they are dry, and that's really good. Do I like them more than any other kind of cracker? Yes. Any other kind of flatbread? I don't know. What do you reckon price-wise? I think they're high quality and I think they're cool and I think they taste nice. So I imagine they're going to be expensive, which is why I'm reviewing them. Six pounds. If I said three pounds, that is probably something I would pick up in a deli or in a supermarket and feel justified in spending. Now, if you buy these directly from the brand online, you're looking at £4.50. Oh, really? I think that's okay because you'd only serve them up on an occasion. And if you can justify, you know, attributing your budget smartly across the rest of, you know, your anti-pasty board, watch Pick the Premium videos, we'll help out with that. I think you could attribute more of your budget to something like this because it's got a really cool story behind it and they are fundamentally a great product. But are they pretentious? No. I don't think they're pretentious. They are what they are. When I leave you to munch on that, I'll fetch the final one. Excellent. I'll only be a minute. The one we've all been waiting for. Well, you've already given me snacking meat, Evers. How's it going to get better than that? Number four. Here we go. Oh. Oh, we're back to unidentifiable pastes on spoons. <laughs> oh, what is that? It smells like fish food. It's not pleasant. Oh, it's anchovies. Is it anchovies? Yeah. Are you going to give this to me? Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like seawater with dead fish in it. Well, it's better than having live fish in it, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to be burping that up for the rest of the day. Right, so that's some sort of like mackerel spread or something, isn't it? This is a contemporary version of the very British 19th century treat, AKA gentleman's relish. Oh, you've been dying for years to give us your gentleman's relish. This is not mine. This is Fortnum Mason's. It comes in a jewellery pot. <coughs> Distinguished by the sheer quantity of anchovy, to this salty amada, we have added dill, garlic, and fragrant Sarawak pepper to make a delicious contemporary version of the very British 19th century treat. Fabulous on hot buttered toast. I'm sure we've had it or used it before. It's very good to add to things to give it a real kind of incredible depth and umami saltiness. We've talked about adding anchovies to meatballs and to sauces and to, to stews. Things like Worcestershire sauce is preserved in fermented anchovy. This is even more pungent. Pungent is a really good description of that, but there is the most astonishing amount of flavour in that. Key phrase, use very sparingly. No denying, it does say use sparingly. It also says can be added to minced meat for different tasting cottage pie, to yeah. fish cakes, potato cakes or croquettes. Alternatively, it can be used as a topping for jacket potato in a Welsh rare bit, which is what I've created for Jamie. For you, scrambled eggs. Oh, so you've made something with it. Let's see. You get a very very subtle hint of fishiness, but you get more salt than anything else. Have you seasoned the eggs at all? I deliberately didn't because That's the really paste is so well seasoned. And no pepper either, because again, it's got the pepper in there. It's got a little bit of garlic, it's got a little bit of dill. It is its own seasoning paste. Really tasty eggs, mate. Mmm. Cheers. You're a git. When you have it like that, obviously it's gonna slap you around the face. In a Welsh rare bit, it becomes much more of a background note, flavour. It enhances all of the flavours around it. If you didn't know that was in there, you'd say that was delicious and it has, oh, ugh, I'm going to say it, depth. But really nice seasoning and, and a bit of warmth. And I'm not sure you'd buy it if fish wasn't your bag. I'm going to throw something else into the mix. What you're eating is anchovy relish. They can't actually call it gentleman's relish because that can only come from the company you've got there in the white pot. Gentleman's Relish, created in 1828 by an Englishman named John Osborne, has to have a minimum of 60% anchovies, and it is so top secret, there is only one person in the business who knows the exact recipe, what all the other spices and herbs are. What I would say is only having one person in the business knowing the exact recipe 
feels foolish. It looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Why is it called gentleman's relish when it's probably not pleasant for all genders? <laughs> Good question. I guess it was named after the gentleman, John Osborne, um, but they also do angler's relish with smoked mackerel and they do poacher's relish with smoked salmon. The original is £2.85. Oh. But how much for Fortnum Mason's anchovy relish? There's a couple of different taxes going on there, isn't there? There's a ceramic pot tax. There's also, and we know this is a hefty tax, uh, the Fortnum & Mason tax. Part of me is saying five pounds, part of me is saying eight pounds. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle and say six pound 50. Six pounds 85. 18 pounds 95. Whoa, Uchi mama. That's a lot of money. You know the one word that comes to mind? Excessive. It's, it's probably a very, very good product. It is, I love it. But it is pretentious. Yeah, pretentious AF, no. Do you know how pretentious it was? That's what I cooked for the Queen on her birthday. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Welsh rarebit with a little gentleman's relish. Oh my God, you gave the Queen your gentleman's relish. Okay, over to you guys. Comment down below which of those do you think was the most pretentious, if any, and come and join the conversation on Twitter by sending us links to potentially pretentious ingredients that we should have a look at. And to do that, use this hashtag. Before you go, just a quick shout to say thanks to all of you who are using and sending us your thoughts on our PAX app. We wanted to create a tool to help you boss your midweek meals, cut down on food waste, and reduce the cost of your weekly food shop. And you are helping us do just that, so thank you. We want to make this as accessible as possible right now, so if you haven't tried it, you can now for a full month absolutely free. The link is in the description box below. And now for the bloop. MDF. No. Balsa wood. <laughs> Used to make model aeroplanes out of that stuff. Shock.